Hey everybody, Dennis Stanley here with Restore Sensei. What does this bottle of Dr. Pepper have to do with calculating the arterial oxygen content? I'll show you. I'll show you a shortcut to calculate the CaO2 and the CVO2, and trust me, it'll blow your mind. As the Japanese would say, Kantan da yo, yarimashou. All right, let's take a look at the arterial oxygen content formula and the concept. The first thing we need to understand is what is it that we're actually calculating? And what we're calculating, whether it's the CaO2, which is the oxygen in the artery, or the CVO2, which is the oxygen in the venous system, we're calculating the amount of oxygen in those spaces. Now you may be thinking, I already have that information, that's what a blood gas tells me. And if you've ever seen a blood gas, you've looked at the PaO2, and that also tells you how much oxygen is in the artery. But it does so from a little bit different perspective. And if we change the perspective to the CVO2, there's a few more things that we can do, and I'll show you that coming up. But the PaO2 is really looking at the P, or the pressure that the oxygen is exerting in the artery. That's why when we look at a blood gas, we look at a PaO2, we get it in tor, or millimeters of mercury. That unit of measure is measuring actually pressure. But when we look at the CVO2 or the CaO2, we look at a different unit of measure. We're literally looking at the volume. Now, technically, it's volume percent, which is just a nerdy chemistry way of looking at things. But we're really much more closely looking at the volume of oxygen in the artery. And it's a much more accurate way of looking at things. All right, so let's just get a little bit nerdy and take a look at the formula for the CVO2, which is right here. And what you'll notice in that formula is that there's really just two parts to it. And the first part on the left is calculating the amount of oxygen that is associated with the hemoglobin that's connected to the hemoglobin. And that's why in that part we have hemoglobin. So it's hemoglobin times 1.34, which is just a constant of how much oxygen molecule that the hemoglobin can hold. And then we're going to times that by the saturation, which is a number that relates to what percent of the hemoglobin have oxygen attached to it. And so the first part on the left is really the most important part. That's where most of your oxygen is. But let's take a look at the other part because there we're going to calculate the amount of oxygen that's dissolved in the plasma. And so we take the PaO2 from the blood gas and then we times it by 0 0.003. Now let me talk about the dissolving in the plasma part. You may wonder, what the heck is that? How can oxygen, a gas, be dissolved in the liquid? And that's what a plasma is. It's a liquid. Well, it's very similar to this Dr. Pepper. You know that in this Dr. Pepper, there is a ton of carbon dioxide gas, and it is technically dissolved in there. Because it's dissolved in there, you can't see the gas. If you look through the bottle, it doesn't matter, you can't see the gas. However, if we were to take this bottle and shake it up a little bit, and then you were to open it, let me just... Wait a minute, that might be a bad idea. But you get the idea. In fact, you can see right there that the CO2 is starting to come, what we call, out of solution. And then you can now see the gas. Well, the same thing's happening in our blood. Oxygen molecules, a gas, is dissolved in the plasma, or the liquid portion of our blood. And you can't really see it. If you pull blood from somebody, you can't see it because the oxygen molecule is dissolved in the gas. But here's the deal. Notice on this formula again that it's the plasma portion is the PaO2 times 0 0.003. And here's the deal. That 0 0.003 is a very small number, and it makes us not really care about that portion of the formula. So just for instance, if I were to say I weigh 150 pounds, let's just say, um, I actually weigh a little more than that because I like ding-dongs, but let's just say I weigh 150 pounds. Seriously, let's just say I weigh 150 pounds. Okay, and then I were to take 150 and times it by 0 .003, I would get 0.45 pounds. So I might have to say more accurately that I weigh 150.45 pounds. Well, if I told you that, you say, I don't care. You mean you weigh 150 pounds because we don't really care about the 0.54. And so it's the same thing with the CaO2. If you were to tell me and calculate it right down to the nth degree, I might get a CaO2 of 20.152. 
But do I care about the 0.152? And the answer is no. I only care if your oxygen content is 20 or 19 or 15 or 10 or whatever it is. I don't care about the small numbers. So the first thing we're gonna do as we look at a shortcut is we're gonna take the plasma portion or the PO2 times 0 0.003 and we're just gonna get rid of that. We don't need that at all. All right, so what we're left with is much more closer to a shortcut, and that is simply the hemoglobin times 1.34, and of course we're going to times that by the saturation, which is a decimal form, and that kind of leads us to our next shortcut. Consider arterial saturation for the most part. What is normal saturation? Uh, well, it's probably, if I were to check you, I'd probably get a saturation of, say, 97%, 95%, 96%. And it's going to be expressed in this formula as a decimal form. So instead of 96, I'm going to say 0.96. Or if it's higher, it's 0.97 or 0.98 or 0.99 if you're 99% sat, which many of you are. However, think about that number for a second, 0.99. What number am I very close to? Well, if I go up just one more notch, I'm close to the number not 100, but 0.99 becomes 1. And so what we have discovered is that we don't care about timesing something by almost one. Uh, if I said your saturation is 100%, then that's the same as timesing it by one. Well, look, the hemoglobin times 1.34 times one, well, that's kind of dumb to do, isn't it? Because something times one is itself. So the next part of the shortcut is that no matter what the saturation they give us, maybe on the NBRC exam in a problem, or that we see on a patient, if it's in the 90s somewhere, we really don't care. Uh, we're just going to get rid of that. And so now you're left with even a shorter shortcut, and that's hemoglobin times 1.34. And if that's all you did, that would be the perfect shortcut. That would get you to the arterial oxygen content answer. Close enough. Would it be off? Technically, yes, by just decimals. And it's in an amount that we really don't care about. Now, there it is. It's the hemoglobin times 1.34, but don't you hate that decimal? Yeah, I do. So let's do one more thing. We can also mathematically do this. And so this is one of our sh final shortcuts. It's hemoglobin divided by three times four. And so that will always get you the answer. In other words, if you were to take a hemoglobin of 15, that would be normal hemoglobin, and divide it by three, that would be five, and times it by four, that would be an arterial oxygen content of 20, 20 volume percent. By the way, that would be normal oxygen content. And why is it normal? Because a hemoglobin of 15 is also about normal. And so that's the shortcut. All right, now that we have checked out the formula and the shortcut to calculate the arterial oxygen content, or the oxygen in the artery, now let's take a look at the oxygen in the venous system, also called the CVO2 formula. Now, the first thing we'll have to recommend is to understand that when the artery goes to the tissues, the tissues are gonna eat up some of that oxygen. And so what started off as about 100% oxygen saturation in the artery is going to end up less. In fact, your tissues are going to eat about how much? about 25% of it. So it's going to leave three quarters of the oxygen in the blood. And that means while your arterial saturation is close to 100%, your venous saturation is going to be closer to 75%. And that's going to be key as we look at the shortcut in the formula to calculate CVO2. But let's take a look at that formula really quickly. So what you first notice as you look at this is that it looks almost exactly alike, like the CAO2. But there's just a couple of differences. So on the first part, we still have the hemoglobin times 1.34, only now we're not going to multiply it times the arterial saturation, we need to use the venous saturation. And then there's the other side of that oxygen that's dissolved in the plasma. Notice now we're not taking the arterial oxygen, the PaO2 and times the 0.003, we're taking the PVO2, the pressure of the oxygen in the venous system. But in fact, we really don't care about that part of the formula because we're still times it by 0.003, and so we just get rid of that altogether. And what we're left with is hemoglobin times 1.34 times, not arterial sat, but times 0.75 because that's closer to, to venous sat. Now here you have two hairy decimals and if you were to look at those that's more math because we don't like to deal with decimals at all but here's the miraculous part. If you were to get your calculator out and you were to take the last part of that shortcut and take 1.34 times 0.75 which represents 
normal Venus saturation. If you were to do that, you get this amazing number that's really close to one. And so in reality, in this shortcut, the hemoglobin times 1.34 times 0.75, well, the 1.34 times 0.75 equals one, and it's kind of dumb to take hemoglobin and times it by one because it's exactly itself. Therefore, those two numbers cancel each other out. Isn't that amazing? We've got rid of the calculation that calculates the plasma because that's so small. And then the constant 1.34 and the saturation of the venous system of 0.75, those have canceled each other out. And what are you left with? Well, the shortest shortcut in the world, and that is hemoglobin. So do you want to know what the shortcut for CVO2 is? Hemoglobin. Just look at the hemoglobin. And isn't it funny that we do all of those calculations only to end up back with the very hemoglobin value that we were probably given in the question or in the situation. And so even that's even easier. So I told you that'd kind of blow your mind. We don't need to do that whole calculation. We only need to look at hemoglobin to get the estimated CVO2. Well, I hope this was helpful. I'm Dennis from Restore Sensei. Please subscribe. We have many, many more videos coming out. And it's not just about the NBRC exam. We'll also talk about things related to getting that better job and how to get along with physicians and nurses and how to really advance your career in the field of respiratory therapy. I'll see you later.